Hi there, this is Matt Allington. Today is Tuesday the 20th of December 2022. We're getting to the business end of the floods as the River Murray waters come down to Big Bend. Just a reminder, there's three links on the screen. First of all, the videos, if you'd like to go back and see my predictions going back uh, several weeks ago. Secondly, if you'd like to interact with this report, I do update the report every day, so you don't need to wait for the update to see what's going on. That's the second link on the screen. And if you'd like to learn how to build these reports, that's the third link on the screen. Okay, now before I go and look at the data, I wanna show you a couple of photos. There's um, a great Facebook community which shares photos. So I appreciate everyone that's sharing photos on Facebook. In fact, I'll be going to Big Ben today to have a look and I'll be taking some photos and sharing those as well. But let me just jump and show you um, two sets of photos. So first of all, here is a photo um, that I actually lifted off of Google Earth. And you can see our shacks here, you can see this red line. So this sort of white line here is actually the road. So the access road, we come up around the cliffs here. In fact, we're coming this way, come in. This is quite high, so maybe orders of magnitude 40 meters or so above normal river level uh, at a guess, 20 to 40 meters, I'm not really sure how high. Anyway, we come down this road and then we get down to water level here and we drive along. And, and here's the shacks here. So I, I think there's something like 21 or 24 shacks. The first one starts about here and the last one is up here. So that's the normal river level. And here is a photo which um, someone posted on Facebook. I think it looks like it came out of a commercial aircraft. Someone may be flying from Sydney to Adelaide. And you can see the difference in the contours of the river here. So take a look over here. You can see that there's uh, what's normally a backwater up here, and it's normally landlocked, um, has now completely opened up. So there's an, uh, a new channel going through there. And then just just look here at, you know, you can sort of see this sort of space here is this space here. But the entire corner has just basically been wiped out. So, and you can see um, our shacks here now. So this little uh, this little landlocked island, currently it's landlocked. In fact, it's not landlocked, it's just the roofs of the shacks because pretty much it's completely underwater now, but you can just see the, the roofs of the shacks. So so that I thought that was a really interesting photo. And um, you know, one observation is that this year during the floods, we've got a lot more um, camera equipment than we had at the last major flood. Even in 93, there just wasn't the number of cameras, certainly not phone cameras around. And if you go back to 74, which was the last time our shack went under, um, then there's certainly um, a lot more cameras around now. So here's the second photo. So this one I also lifted off Facebook from yesterday. So whoever posted this one, thank you. Um, you can notice this is our shack here. So it's just a modest shed, but you can see here the, um, the level of the water. So this is half, basically halfway up the shack. So we're probably 25% off the ground up the shack now. Um, here's Penny's shack uh, next door. This is the first floor. So downstairs is basically an unlined space. And um, yeah, here's the Dyson shack over here. This they're uh, well and truly under. So, um, so we'll be going up there today and take some more photos and I'll share them in future posts. Okay, so here I am in the report, the one that you can link online. Um, let me go into a couple of key charts that I'd like to talk about today. So first of all, we'll go and have a look at the lower system view, which is the view that I look at most of the time. And so once again, you can see that this combination of Wackle Junction and the Murrumbidgee and the Darling has peaked at 238. And you can see that we've basically got that same peak at Lock 10, which was pretty much as I expected, and that has come into play here. Now, of course, the big question is how much of this 238 is going to come into SA, and I'm gonna have a look at that in a little bit more detail in a moment, but notice that there's no water going into Lake Victoria. I did actually see the Premier on the news last night saying and talking about Lake Victoria, and um, because I've been talking about the fact that they potentially can siphon 10 gigalitres a day for probably 10 or 12 days to take the peak off. The Premier specifically spoke about that yesterday and said that that's not going to happen. So as I understand it, there's some problem with the barrages or, or something in Lake Victoria where they're not allowed to, where they're not able to hold that at capacity. So based on that announcement yesterday, 
I do not expect to see any water siphoned off into Lake Victoria. So that's bad news. So then the big question is how much of this 238 is coming into SA? Um, currently we're, um, we're about, what is that, 60 gigalitres off the, the peak. And we'll have a look at that delay in a minute. And then interesting, if you have a look at lock one here, you'll see that um, there's actually no data here. And what is happening, uh, I believe is that the lock one uh, meter, so the, the method of measuring the flow through lock one has basically broken. And so um, some of this technology is quite old and it's, yeah, it's just failing under the absolute amount of water. So we've actually lost visibility of the water that's coming into uh, or through lock one. And that's a bit of a problem, but I do have a report which I'm going to try and predict what is coming into lock one, because ultimately, if we know how far into this 238 we're currently getting, then we know how much worse it's going to get. Um, so let me jump over to, this is the chart that I did the other day. And so this is looking at lock 10. So lock 10 appears to have the peak already, 238, give or take. And then the question is how long before the flow to SA will peak? And so we can do that by, by just basically trying to move this over. Um, so it's quite a tricky little exercise because you just sort of have to visually inspect what's going on. You can sort of notice that it seems to be aligned here somewhat, but as the velocity of the water comes through, it, it occurs to me that the uh, speed in which the uh, downstream lock um, receives the water from upstream may increase. Um, but you know, this, I'm not an expert in fluid dynamics, so I'm not really sure. Um, so notice how this is sort of petered off or sort of started to come off at an angle here, and this is the same here. I don't know. Um, you could argue that maybe we're not going to get much more here, but um, my guess, I don't know where else the water is going to go. Of course, it could once again, it could go out into the backwaters and the wetlands, and then it could come back in over time. But I just believe we're still going to get uh, quite a bit more put this back in full screen I just I can't see how we're not going to get somewhere close between 220 and 235 gigalitres per day and then how long does it take to get down to lock one well once again I think I did this the other day but something like uh, 24 25 days this is from lock 10 so what I have done uh, today is I've created a, a new chart to try and understand what's going on with lock one. So remember lock one, we haven't had a water reading now for nine days. And so we've got no idea how much water is coming through lock one at the moment. If we just jump and have a look at the, uh, the levels, I think it's this one here, you'll see that lock one, uh, this is the height. So all the time so far I've been talking about water velocity or how much water is coming through per day. But now I'm actually looking at the heights um, a few people have asked me, can I extrapolate the water flow against the height? Well, it's virtually impossible to do that for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I just don't have the historical data. Um, and so if I had really good data from 74 and also from 56, then we could have a look at that. But the other thing is that the river changes over time. So, um, so backwaters are closed off, the silt comes in and out and changes the profile of the land. So I don't think we can use history as a way of extrapolating the future for those two reasons. We don't have the data and also the, the nature of the river changes over time. But you can see here that lock one, so that's at Blanchetown, is up around 6.7 meters and Swan Reach is also about the same height. So you notice how Swan Reach is taken off. And once again, it's got to do with the contour of the river and, and various other things. So it'll be interesting to keep an eye on that. But over the last week, this has really accelerated. Um, so that was the 20th. So if we go back to sort of like the 14th, so 6.1, so it's gone up uh, half a meter in, in the last week and that's from uh, lock one. All right, so let's go back to this chart that I created. So we don't have this visibility of what's coming through lock one at the moment. The last re recording we had was 130. So if I try and do work out the delay between flow to SA and lock one, so if I just sort of move this across. Now, it's interesting, if you look at this, this little hump down here, so if I try and align the humps, uh, you know, orders of magnitude, something like that so probably 12 days so back here when the water velocity was around 55 gigalitres per day there seemed to be a delay of about 12 
But um, as the velocity changes, I'm actually surprised it seems to have slowed down a little bit. So now this would suggest that it's more like 16 days in delay. But, you know, uh, a bit of guesswork here on my part. So I'm going to take this one. So I'm going to say 14 days of delay. So if there's 14 days of delay, then whatever water was coming through FA 14 days ago should be what is currently coming through lock one. And so if we take the 14 day delay, there was 158.9, so I call it 159 gigalitres per day. And therefore I'm expecting that that's the amount of water that's coming through lock one at the moment. So I'm calling it 159 to 160 gigalitres per day coming through lock one. So 160, um, so potentially we've got another 70 gigalitres per day to come and be added on to what we've got now. So not looking good. I'm saying at least three quarters of the way up our shack. It's a guess because I don't really have any way to uh, predict that, but it's just a gut feel based on how quickly it's gone up recently. And indeed, I'm thinking that most of the shacks at Big Bend that are on the first floor or the elevated shacks Looks like that elevation may go under as well. So that's my prediction, but I don't know. Don't have to believe me. Um, put some notes down in the comments below if you have a different view.